Okay, is the patient awake? No, she's not. She's, she's not breathing. awake. She's okay. breathing, but she's, she's not. She's only two. Okay, tell me exactly what's happened there. Come my partner, because I was in bed. He was up with me. Okay. Uh, she's fallen down the stairs, she has. Right, okay. From the top of the stairs to the bottom, and her whole head's all swollen, and she bit the top of her tongue off or something. Imagine leaving your two-year-old daughter in the hands of a monster. In January 2020, Sinead James found herself trapped in a bleak lockdown. As a single mother in Haverford West, that's in Wales in the UK, she struggled to raise her three daughters. Among them was Lola, a radiant and mischievous little girl, but a bundle of light nonetheless. Born on September 30th, 2017, Lola's presence would light up any room with her infectious joy. But that joy would be snuffed out by some sick monster. She loved indulging in her favourite snacks, devouring Monster Munch, whilst watching her favourite movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Lola found delight in getting dirty in the garden, raiding the fridge for yoghurt and playing with her friends. However, their lives would take a dark turn the following month when their mother, Sinead James, would meet a man on Facebook, Carl Bevan. In the early days of the coronavirus lockdown, Carl Bevan swiftly moved into their family home. Sinead had recently escaped an abusive relationship and she seeked help from various agencies. She had been cautioned about allowing strangers into their lives, warned by her healthcare professional on her supply network. But that's exactly what she did. Sinead found Lola demanding and fearing that there was something inherently wrong with her. She sought medical intervention to address her concerns. Their home became a breeding ground for chaos, cluttered, filthy and tainted by the stench of dampness. Support was offered and reluctantly accepted, yet it remained a constant struggle. Around the same time that Carl Bevan entered their lives, promising to protect Sinead and her children from harm. However, the truth could not have been more different. Their relationship was far from the sanctuary that Sinead James had hoped for. Bevan, 31, possessed a cruel and violent temper, prone to explosive outbursts. The early days of their relationship switched from good times to devastating conflicts, often unfolding in volatile Facebook Messenger exchanges, even when they were just sat in the same house in different rooms. Sinead battled depression, whilst Carl Bevan sought solace in drugs and alcohol. Cannabis, amphetamines, sleeping tablets and Xanax were his frequent companions, and these often exacerbated his volatile nature. Text messages revealed the toxic dynamic in their household, highlighting one particular instance when Carl ominously warned Sinead. Bevan's messages to James were filled with a venomous anger. He called her derogatory names and accused her of being deceitful. The tension between the two escalated when Sinead James would enrage Carl Bevan further, on multiple occasions. Bevan showed little regard for the little two-year-old Lola. When Lola woke up screaming from a nightmare, Bevan threatened to throw her out the window if she didn't shut up. Recognising the abusive behaviour, Sinead confronted Bevan, labelling his actions as a form of domestic violence. Disturbing incidents unfolded, revealing the harm that Lola endured under the care of Bevan. In one instance, Lola suffered a bloody nose whilst her mother was just in the other room. Bevan later blamed Lola for a bruised chin, claiming she fell over. On May the 4th, 2020, Bevan sent Sinead a late night message, informing her that Lola had fallen and injured her lip. Text records indicated that Lola had been spitting and making distressed noises, likely as a form of protest against the abuse she endured. On May the 10th, a neighbour had photographed Lola with a black eye, but Sinead James dismissed it as an accident while someone else was watching her. Warning signs were there, but poor Lola would get no respite. This situation would escalate further. When Bevan was drunk, he'd resort to violence. He began punching the walls, and then he would take a hammer and start to smash up the property. Concerned for their safety, Sinead temporarily took herself and her family to a neighbour's property, but inexplicably returned the very next day. Her cousin raised concerns about the state of the house and warned her that social services may get involved. As the abusive pattern persisted, Sinead would reach a breaking point on June the 11th. After an argument, Bevan had grabbed her, leaving her shaken and determined to end the relationship. However, ultimately, she allowed Bevan 
to continue living in the house and often leaving him solely in charge of the children, always seeming to avoid conflict instead of thinking about her own and most importantly, her children's safety. On July the 5th, a friend of Sinead noticed bruises on Lola's legs whilst they were at the park. Two days later, whilst under the influence, Bevan recklessly pushed the pram with the baby inside into the middle of the road. Sinead had to swiftly intervene to protect her child, but still, she took no action. Concerns about Bevan's abusive behaviour were echoed by the grandmother of Bevan's own daughter. She expressed worry about his treatment of his ex-partner and their daughter urging caution regarding his presence around Sinead James's children. Sinead confronted Carl Bevan's mother about these allegations, but received reassurances that they were untrue. Despite the warning signs, Sinead James failed to take any substantial action to protect her children from Carl Bevan. Little Lola James continued to suffer injuries. On July the 10th, Sinead suspected that Lola's nose was broken, as Carl claimed that she had accidentally fallen on the coffee table. Witnesses noticed marks on Lola's body, indicating possible grabbing or hitting. But Sinead lied and attributed these marks to pre-existing conditions. Her mother chose not to seek medical help for Lola, allowing her injuries to heal on their own. The chilling events unfolded further on July the 10th. While Bevan was alone with the girl, Sinead texted him, expressing unwavering trust in his care. Bevan took pictures of the baby with Snapchat filters and claiming that she was in bed. But just moments later, in the chilling midnight hours, abruptly Sinead was awoken by a loud noise, followed by the piercing screams of Lola James. She rushed to the scene to see Carl Bevan gripping Lola by the head, assuring James that he had everything under control. Instead of investigating further, Sinead retreated to her bedroom, leaving Lola alone with Bevan. By 6.30am, the child's condition took a grave turn. Lola was unconscious, brutally battered and covered in bruises, the result of Bevan's merciless blows. In an attempt to conceal his heinous acts, Bevan turned to the internet to look up head injuries. He took photos and videos of Lola's battered body creating a sickening record to deceive others. Around 6.32am, he messaged his mother sharing his twisted plot and the sickening photos. His mother, upon seeing the distressing photos of Lola, urged him to take Lola straight to the hospital. Bevan, in a 22 second film, showed his mother the limp and severely injured state that Lola was in. When Lola James inevitably fell to the floor, Bevan callously remarked, She's gone. She's gone. At 7am, Bevan's mother urged him to wake Sinead and seek medical attention. She continued to message him, desperately trying to reach out, but received no response. It wasn't until 7.20am that Bevan finally woke up Sinead. Concocting a fabricated story about how Lola James had fallen down the stairs after an encounter with a family dog. When James found her precious daughter unconscious on the living room couch, her face and lips swollen and bruised, Bevan showed her a piece of Lola's tongue in his hand, further deepening the horror. Nearly an hour after the internet searches at 7.28am, Bevan asked his mother to call an ambulance, claiming he couldn't make the call himself. He falsely assured his mother that he had already informed Sinead about the ambulance. Meanwhile, Bevan continued to document Lola's injured state through photos and videos on his phone. At around 7.34am, paramedics arrived at Lola's home to find her in an unconscious state and in critical condition, with a bruised and swollen face, unresponsive and unconscious. She was quickly transported to the hospital in Haverford West. However, the injuries Lola had sustained were devastating and proved fatal. After 11.15am, her precious life slipped away. On March 17th, Sinead James travelled to be with Lola at the hospital in Cardiff, whilst Bevan remained at a neighbour's house. Police officers arrived at the scene at 11.17am, capturing their conversation with Bevan through uh, body cam footage. So she probably weighs more than a little one. So no, that's what I mean, she yeah. took a fly on her. Mm. I, I don't want to harm the doctor, so it's for all the time. 
That's the only thing that I'd be honest, I'd be partially responsible for is the fact that I was making the bowl of cereal when I was swimming. But I was making the bread. Bevan tried to shift blame, claiming that Lola had been pushed down the stairs by the dog, minimising his responsibility in this. Prior to the arrest, the couple exchanged messages, discussing what they would say to the police when questioned. It's that f***ing dog jumping on her constantly. Everyone is blaming me by the sound of it, and I'm not having any of it. Never in my life have I harmed that child. Like, you should know that. He later sent a message saying, What are you going to say? Sinead, this is important, like. Sinead says, What you told me? Yeah, obviously, but you've got to get it bang on like, Sinead, for f***ing sake like. Well, I'm going to say exactly what you told me. I can remember what you said from word to word. Which is what then? Sinead, please answer me. I'm going to spare here as well as you. At 4.43pm, Sinead James was arrested at the University Hospital of Cardiff on suspicion of child neglect. Shortly after, at 4.37pm, Bevan was also arrested in a neighbour's house. During their police interviews, Bevan provided his account of things. He claimed to have been downstairs all night, making coffee when he saw Lola at the top of the stairs unclothed. Bevan approached her, asking if she was alright and offering her cereal. According to Bevan, he heard footsteps from upstairs before a load of loud bangs. He rushed towards the noise and found Lola on the floor, panicking as he believed she was unconscious. As he tried to help her, he realised she was snoring and possibly choking on her tongue. Bevan attempted to clear her airways and put a cold cloth on her head. He denied physically harming the child and described his relationship with Sinead as mostly good, although they had arguments. Bevan admitted to searching Sinead's phone and keeping a watchful eye on her, suspecting contact with an ex-partner. Police crime scene investigators examined the house and discovered that, despite its overall untidy state, the bathtub appeared to be recently cleaned. It's also believed that Bevan had cleaned the bathroom after putting... Lola in the bathtub, possibly in an attempt to revive her after assaulting her. Investigators found a child's wet and vomit covered onesie, a grey onesie, in the living room. Tragically, on July the 21st, 2020, Lola passed away at 1.18 pm with relatives by her side. Dr. Lee Peter determined that the cause of death was subdural hematoma and brain swelling. A two year old had suffered over 101 external injuries. Examination of her eyes revealed serious damage to both retinas and a scan showed catastrophic and fatal brain injuries too. The severity of her injuries were likened to those of a high-speed car crash. Following Lola's death, a post-mortem examination revealed bruises to her legs, her arms, face and body, as well as puncture wounds to her head. Severe brain injuries inconsistent with an accidental cause, indicating intentional harm. Due to the onset brain dysfunction caused by the extensive head trauma, it's unlikely that Lola would have even been able to scream or cry. The pattern of bruises on her right thigh suggests that there may have been a weapon used. The unexplained triangular bruising and puncture wound on her forehead still remains a chilling mystery. The absence of cries and screams led to the haunting reality that Lola had been abused horrifically even while she was unconscious and unable to defend herself. Not that this two-year-old would have been able to defend herself against this sick, twisted man. On April the 21st, 2022, Carl Bevan and Sinead James faced re-arrest and were charged with murder and causing or allowing the death of a child, respectively. The trial began on March the 7th, 2023, lasting four weeks at Swansea Crown Court. It was brought to light that Sinead had attempted to conduct domestic violence checks on Bevan just a day before using Claire's law. However, Bevan refused to give her his date of birth, which prevented crucial information being obtained. I don't need to give it to you, they won't find anything on me. Given evidence, James said, It was a day before this tragic thing happened to my daughter. It's like he planned it and refused to give me his date of birth. I was a bit worried why he wouldn't cooperate with doing it. But I went to the park with Lola and my auntie and forgot about it. If I knew it was a risk, I could have gotten him out of my house. I never thought he would hurt my child. The court heard the pair had met on Facebook in February 2020, before Bevan started staying at home just days later. Kyle was sent down for a minimum of 28 years. Lola's mother, Sinead James, was sent down for six years for allowing or causing her death. 
but will serve half before being eligible for release. I for one am glad both got time behind bars. Sinead, as she said herself, failed her child. In the worst way, she let little Lola down. How can you invite a man, especially like that, into your home with your daughters just days after meeting him? The home of your little two-year-old. Awful parents, and that piece of scum that was sent down for life, Carl Bevan. He is one of the biggest low-life, evil little cretins I've ever heard of. This man shouldn't see the outside again, but one day will, I'm sure. So, who was truly evil? On your screen now is the freezer mum, and this is a truly haunting case. Or over here is another heartbreaking one, the Toad Family Murders. Click all those good buttons and thanks.